and all things BFIT. Just to introduce myself, my name is Akeem Hill. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Benjamin Franklin Institute of Technology. I've been serving at BFIT for almost four years. I'll be going on my fifth recruitment cycle this fall. I really do have a passion for connecting students with different types of opportunities after they graduate from high school and just re um, introducing them to some opportunities that they may not may or may not have considered throughout their previous experiences and I hope that this presentation will allow you to see exactly what we offer who we are as uh, as admissions counselors and and what our aim and our mission is um, before I get into the meat of this presentation um, I want to direct your attention to this video that I will share with you all via the share screen option on this zoom meeting so give me a second while I pull that up um, Give me one minute. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. Give me one second. <clears throat> You're the host now. You should be able to share now. Okay, great. All right, so direct your attention to this video. All right, I'm gonna press play. Sometimes it feels like everyone, parents, teachers, guidance counselors, is obsessed with getting you into college. At BFIT, we're more concerned with what you get out of college. While earning a degree in the humanities or social sciences or fine arts is a valuable achievement, it doesn't guarantee you a job when you graduate. BFIT is a nonprofit technical college offering degrees in high demand fields like automotive technology, electrical engineering, biomedical engineering technology, construction management, artistry, and more. We teach our students the modern skills that employers are looking for. You get hands-on training on state-of-the-art equipment in small classes taught by experienced industry professionals. It's a big reason why we have a 93% graduate placement rate. BFIT is located right in the heart of the Boston area communities that it serves, and we offer financing solutions to make our school accessible for anyone who wants to attend. At a time when most schools expect you to work for them, BFIT is the school that works for you. Okay, awesome. Well, hopefully with that, with that minute clip, you were able to get a synopsis as to what the school offers and who we are as an institution. Um, so a lot of people may or may not know about BFIT, but one of the things that I like to tell the students, especially prospective students who are looking to enroll, is that some of those programs that you will see and hear about are very self-explanatory. You can even, you can look at it and you can automatically know exactly what it's going to entail. For example, automotive technology, you know, it's going to deal with cars. With computer technology, it's going to deal with computers. Mechanical engineering technology is going to deal with some sort of mechanics, so on and so forth. But then there are some other programs that might need a little bit of uh, explanation. For example, opticianry or even HVAC, or even just some of the other programs that people just not necessarily know too much about. I think that we will hopefully be able to articulate and answer those questions as we go on in the presentation. But just to reiterate what this video said, we are a very small um, nonprofit college that offers a variety of different four-year, two-year, and certificate programs. Um, we have very small classroom sizes, so there's very specialized and individualized so that the students can get the best of the classroom experience and also that they can build those relationships with their professors. Typically what happens when I bring students on campus, when students come on campus and I bring them to the different labs, they're able to see exactly how 
that small classroom size is very beneficial for them. They can stop the class and ask many different questions. And of course, because we have a hands-on component that are associated with each class and each, each, um, each classroom experience in each lab, students are able to actually see what they're learning about and not just read it in the textbook, but actually to practice it. So there's an application piece that we so speak of and, and it's also have been embedded in our mission for hundreds of years. So to give a very, very, very brief history about the school, the school was founded in 1908 by Andrew Carnegie. So it wasn't founded by Benjamin Franklin, but this man named Andrew, and, um, Andrew Carnegie matched money that Benjamin Franklin left for the school of Boston to fund different technical applications. And so over the span of 200 years, we have many different programs that are directly aligned with some of the books that he had earlier on. And, and part of that vision was one, that it would in turn help the community and two, that these citizens would become, th these apprentices will become good citizens. So as you see with these different programs that you're inadvertently and directly helping the community. And that's one of the great ways about this hands-on education is that you, you can interact and look at life through the lens of technology and it, and it encompasses so many different things. Uh, another thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about that's a little bit unrelated is of course just everything that's happening right now with COVID-19 and how it's literally sweeping the nation. I mean, we see it on the news all the time. It's really been the subject of everybody's conversation, especially looking at the concern of the future, wondering what's gonna happen with education, what's gonna happen with all the plans that I've made. Um, so I definitely wanted to reassure that this is the best to, the best way to move forward. Is this still effectively planned? A lot of times, especially with this quarantine, many people are in fear. And of course, we are, our hearts and our um, thoughts go out to all of those who may have lost loved ones or may be experienced having a hard experience during this time of quarantine. But having said that, you guys are all doing a great job by attending this call because this is a great way to effectively plan so that we can help answer the questions and that we are doing our best to make sure the students are receiving that education that they are paying for and that they are getting what they're paying for by making sure that we have this quality classroom experiences and of course accessibility to these professors. Um, one of the links that I would like to share with you all is this um, link that I read earlier today um, that newsweek.com shared um, they basically a link that talks about all of the essential workers. And another thing that, of course, we do appreciate all the essential workers, those who are working on the front lines and making sure everything is safe. But especially during this time of the pandemic, we realized that some people are getting paid and some people aren't. One of the things that we've always promoted about the school is that we have a hands-on education that leads to direct employment. So by coming to the school, not only are you going to invest in the quality education, but the return on investment is that much greater, not be only because of the average starting salaries that students are making, but because of the opportunities that we are giving to these different students. So it then flips the problem in terms of many schools having the problem of trying to find different jobs for students, with our problem being we don't have enough students to fulfill the jobs that we are offering. So we have a very strong career service and industry partnerships office that helps students find different types of full-time, part-time, and internship opportunities after they graduate. And there are some opportunities that they can get while they're still a student on campus. So having said all of that, we are already a school that, that is very competitive in terms of our, our the average salaries that students are receiving, and also the different type of jobs that we are uh, offering towards students. But especially during this time, many of the workers are people who are, um, are the people who are graduating from the many of these different programs that we offer, automotive technology, uh, health information technology, computer technology, biomedical engineering technology. There's, there is all of these different groups of majors are listed as essential workers and on the front line. So students are becoming inadvertently directly, inadvertently and directly serving the community with these different programs. And I think it's definitely great just because it just speaks to the mission as to how we are doing our best to make sure that the students are Get it, getting everything that they need. So moving on, just to get to get you acquainted with like a little bit of who we are, and if there's other questions, I do want to direct your attention to the website. Um, so the website will have pretty much every and all information that's there. So I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm going to take you guys and walk you guys through the website. Um, I just learned how to do this, and I'm trying to figure that out. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Bear with me, please. I am. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. No, 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 no. Let's try this one. 
second. Ah, right, here we go. All right. So right now we are on the BFIT website. So as you can see, it breaks it down into the academics, admissions and aid, life at BFIT about us and supporting BFIT. So here you can find any and all information as it relates to who we are. You'll find information about our mission statement, our vision, our goals, and just kind of understanding a little bit about who we are, just like some additional background information of information that I haven't really got to share with you all. Um, but for your purposes, especially for the prospective students, I want to direct your attention to the application. So in many areas on this website, you will see the apply button. If you go to the, the home page, which is right here, you will see that there is the apply um, the apply button right here. So if you click here, it'll direct you right to our application, which loads up another screen, and you'll see the different forms. And the application is broken up into steps. Once you um, click on next, um, it'll take you to personal information side. So you want to make sure you're accurately filling this out because you want to make sure that we're getting the correct spelling of your name, correct spelling of your email address, correct spelling of your, your, um, your mailing address, phone number, all of those, all of those uh, particulars of that information is important. Um, in addition to that, if you scroll down from that home page, it talks a little bit about that. It shows one that shows the video that we had just played earlier on in the presentation, just kind of giving you a synopsis of what the school is, and also talking about why students choose BFIT. So there's always a why to the to the what, and I think this definitely answers that particular. And then also scrolling right right under that takes you to another area of applying. Now specific, uh, particularly for the application process, it is very simple. All you have to do is to fill out the application, um, but it takes you to the step-by-step -step process of like what the application will entail and what's the most important information. So of course we wanna get that background information, but most importantly, we wanna make sure that you are highlighting the major that you are interested in. So we do have a section of all the different majors that I will take you to shortly after I explain this part. Um, but it should tell, it, it asks you to choose one, um, one major and a secondary major. Typically, students might choose majors within the same ballpark, but we still want to make sure that we're giving you the accurate information for the major of your choice. So make sure that you choose one of those majors. And then step two is completing the online application, which I just showed you, kind of broken up into steps of personal information and other areas. There's also some um, brief short answer questions that you would have to display and also talk about basically why you chose this major and like what do you know about it. Another thing that I wanted to point your direction to is step three. Now, many students will ask about the, pro the status of the application and the reason why it, it's still pending is because we do not have step three. So step three is to submit your high school or GED high set transcript to us. And the email address is listed right there, admissions at bfit.edu. Now, I know many of you are already in contact with some of your guidance counselors or may have already developed a system in which to communicate with them. This would be a great time to reach out to them and ask them to send us over a copy of your official high school transcript, GED or high set transcript as well. Make sure that they send that to admissions at bfit.edu. And of course, if you have any questions, we will, we're going to list our numbers in the chat and you can contact us directly. Now, let me um, take you guys to the section of the majors. I'm just gonna scroll up, go over to academics. So of course, across the website, there's uh, many different areas, and especially for prospective students where they are able to apply and also to request information. So requesting information is not the application. Requesting information is just simply you just inquiring about a particular program or wanting to be included in the mailing list. Now, if you click over to the apply button, of course, I'll obviously encourage your students to apply because you want them to have all of the information in the system. We want to make sure that we get them at the application process in this spot. Now, scrolling over to the left, you will see these different links you'll see programs you'll see uh, of course student success which I'll talk a little bit more about a little bit later uh, and some of the other academic um, resources that are available to the student but for as particulars of this conversation I want to look at the programs and if you click on that plus sign it'll show you all the different programs that are listed so it literally has every single program here 
whether it be the four-year programs, the two-year programs, or the certificate programs. And if you click on each of them, it'll show you exactly which one it is or, or the, um, the type of program. For example, for automotive technology, if we click on, click on that, it's gonna take us to the automotive technology section. On, gotta move the screen over here. Typically, another thing that you will see is a video that just kind of displays the, or talks a little bit about the program. It shows some of the current students or previous students who have had much success within the programs, talking about the classroom experience and what some, and what are some of the things that they're doing after they had graduated. So it talks about some of the places that they'll go, how, to, um, rev how this is essentially revving up the career, which is a play on the automotive technology term, because when you think of rev up, you think of cars. Uh, it talks a little bit about the, uh, just the synopsis of the program, and then also just talking about the two different programs because because we have our associates and a certificate program with automotive technology, it just displays the difference right here. So it talks about the difference between the two and what, and what some of the learning outcomes are. And then this is information that you will see across the board. So I'll click on a few more just so you guys can get a sense um, because this has a list of two different programs, the associates and also the certificate. But I'll click on, let's see, construction management. Click on that one. You guys can see a little bit about what that looks like. And if you scroll down another video uh, highlighting construction management, talking about the program overview, learning outcomes, the job outlook, and the career paths. So that's typically listed in all of our programs. Um, let's go over to the right here. You guys follow, hopefully, I might let me know if you, uh, let me go to the chat. Let me see if you guys have any uh, questions. I, I did see some, and Shawnee is helping out. Thank you, Shawnee. Thank you, men. No Let's problem. See, we all are a team here. We are helping each other out there <laughs> answering questions that I didn't even know about. Thank you, men. Thank you, Shawnee and Calvin. All right. <laughs> so uh, another another area that I wanted to show you that is that is in each of these sections is meet the faculty. So if we click on meet the faculty, it'll show you to either the department chair or some of the instructors contact information. So of course, as an admissions counselor, one of the things that I really enjoy doing is I really enjoy learning about all of the programs and I really wanna be knowledgeable. And I think this is, I can speak for my team that we like to be very knowledgeable of all the programs that we promote. However, of course, there's going to be some questions that we just may not have the answer to or we may need additional information. And this is where the instructors and the department chairs come into play and they serve a great purpose. So you will find information about each of the professors and the instructors here. It'll also show you where their office is and it'll also show you their contact information via email. So if you wanna contact them directly, feel free to do so because they'll definitely be able to, uh, to contact you. All right. All right, give me one second. <laughs> All right. Now I'll click on one more program. Click on Opticianry. Opticianry is one of my favorite programs. I'll explain why. <laughs> so again, with opticianry, um, has a list of the, of course, the program, the associates in opticianry, learning outcomes, job outlook, and some of the other 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 outcomes that are particular to that program. Um, so if anybody has any questions about any particular programs, I'd be more than happy to talk about it. But since I'm already on opticianry, I can talk a little bit about that, about how it is like essentially the architecture of glasses. So students are learning how to understand prescriptions, understand eye, eye health, and understand the technology with, with creating eyewear and also contacts as well. Uh, we are one of the only schools in the in the New England area that has a two-year program in opticianry. And this program, like some of our other programs, do have internship components that are built within the curriculum. And this is also very good because, of course, we're always promoting careers. We're promoting jobs and we're promoting just making sure that students are well-rounded within that classroom experience and they can apply that experience to, a re to, to real life after they graduate. But with some of our programs like opticianry, like biomedical engineering technology, I'll click on that so you guys can see. Um, we have internship components that are built within the curriculum. So in their last semester of their final year at the school, 
they are able to participate in an internship and many of these internships will hire our students full time, which serves as a, as a direct pathway. So that's another thing that we that we focus on with 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 BFIT is that we are also intentionally creating pathways for students that way they are making uh, great connections while they're still a student and they can use that um, when they graduate. Um, and also, in addition, speaking of additional opportunities after students graduate, one of the things that we have at the school are different types of career fairs. So we have part-time career fairs, we have full-time career fairs, and we also have career fairs that are particular to particular majors. I know automotive typically has uh, their own career fairs, and this is a great way to get students connected with many different, many of the different industry partners and employers who hire our students full-time. Now, one of the great things about our school is that we have some, the, the professors at the school have uh, many different connections to different employers in the stride and, and industry partners, and they often work with the career services department and also these industry partners so that they can make sure that their curriculum is tailored to fit exactly what is going to be needed once the student graduates. So you are learning the, the, the best of the best information at the school and everything that you learn is going to be applied um once you graduate so that's kind of just serves as an additional pathway um, i want to talk a lot about some of the support services too on campus um, as you can see we have the student success tab um, so typically after students um after they complete the admissions process financial aid and student accounts and i'll talk a little bit about financial aid and student accounts and we actually do have the associate director of financial aid on the call right now Connie wilkerson so she may ch jump in and chime in about financial aid or she may not but uh <laughs> but, i'll um, chime in when asked <laughs> awesome thank you so much shani thank you so much so talking a little bit about students success um so after they finish after they have already finished like the admissions financial aid student accounts process um typically we transfer them over to student success so as admissions and financial aid we're working to enroll students uh the student success department is willing to just retain students and keep students engaged and on campus and making sure that they have everything that they need to succeed so one of the key things about the student success department is that they have many different areas that, that, that do keep the attention of students. Um, one of them being the Academic Success Center. So one of the things that you'll find at the school is that we have our instructors who serve as tutors. So there's a schedule that's displayed at the side of the of the Academic Success Center that highlights the different times in which our professors will be there. So typically between the hours of 7 a.m. and 4 p.m., the students are guaranteed to find a professor there who will help them with anything as relates to a particular major or a particular subject. So we have, of course, like math and English tutors, but we also have automotive tutors, mechanical engineering tutors, and many other tutors that are associated with different majors. Now, of course, the students will obviously build relationships with these professors. So if they are not present in the, during the time that they need to be, they can always set up appointments with their professors and that way they can um, meet with them <laughs> before and after class. That, that, that doesn't work with the particular times of this Academic Success Center. Another resource that students also should take advantage of is our um, advising, cent advising center. So each student will be given an advisor once they become a student on campus. And it serves as a great way for students to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with an on-campus faculty or staff. Typically, we meet with the students. I actually happen to be an advisor, so that's why I say we. So typically, we meet with students three, at least three times a semester, having an initial intake meeting to get to know the student and talk about goals that are going to happen throughout the semester. There's also a midterm meeting. So it happens, of course, around the time of midterms to kind of check in with the student to see everything that has been accomplished. And if there's something that needs to be improved, we talk about that as well. And then, of course, in our final meeting, we recap the semester and also talk about what's going to be the best moves for the next semester. So we're the first to be notified about everything as it relates to the student. If the student is doing exceptionally well in class, we're notified about that. But if a student is showing any area of improvement, we're also notified about that as well, considering that we are the frontliners and know the student the best way so that we can provide that outreach for the student. There's, all, there's also an Office of Disability Services that provides different types of accommodations for the students, which is run by Sally Heckel. And then of course also with the Career Services Industry Partnership Office that I referred to first. So that kind of encompasses everything as it relates to the academic success suite and all the different departments that are there. Of course we have access to the library which has access to our online database and also just additional resources as it relates to any type of study skill that the students need. Um, of course looking at the academic calendar you'll be able to see everything that happens throughout the year and just understanding important dates and things that you might need to know about. 
and of course the course catalog which is very general so unless you need something that is of another particular major but that is also a great resource for you so let's go back to uh, the admissions and aid tab um, you guys can look along with me and of course as you saw like in many of our different screens you have the request information and then apply now so students are always if they see anything that they like or if they want to pursue the, the application they can click one of the two and it will direct them to filling out those information so that they can either receive information or, or enter the application so in the admissions and aid tab one it gives you an option for, to see obviously the bfit live virtual open houses that have been happening since this pandemic started and i think it's a great way to still engage and i'm very happy and excited that we have people who are online and 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 here and listening so once again we want to thank you we do appreciate your time today and can hopefully you will continue to, to join us in other outreaches that we have so of course there's uh, options to um see other open houses that might happen and of course not all of them are tailored towards admissions some of them are also tailored towards financial aid and then we also have other areas of the school other departments who are doing different types of lives as well so hopefully you guys can tune into those once those become available and of course applying and of course cost and financial aid so at this moment if shawnee if you don't mind if you want to talk very very briefly about financial aid and that can probably wrap it up and talk about um just kind of going back from where i started Sure, no problem. Can everyone hear me? Akeem, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, they can hear you. I think they're all muted, but yes. Okay. Um, so hi, welcome everyone uh, to our open house today. We're glad that, again, as Akeem said, amidst everything that is going on with quarantine and just so many things being up in the air, we're so glad that you are taking time to get to know BFIT a bit more um, and to get more information about the admissions and now with the financial aid process. Um, again, my name is Shawnee Wilkerson. I'm the Associate Director of Financial Aid. And I've been at BFIT now about two and a half years. So walking students through the process of applying and receiving a financial aid award and coming up with a financial plan for the year is something that I'm very used to. Um, so as I sent in the text, if anyone has seen the chat that's been going on while Akeem has been presenting, I did give the link for the FAFSA application for next year. Um, if you've already done your FAFSA and you've gotten your financial aid award, that's great. Um, we hope to hear from you, you know, about any questions that you have about your specific financial aid funds that have been um, created for you. If you haven't done your FAFSA and you're a Massachusetts state resident, you wanna make sure that you get that in before May 1st, uh, because all Massachusetts state residents are considered for the Massachusetts state scholarship, which can be up to $1,800 if you qualify for the maximum amount. And that's $1,800 of free money that you don't have to repay, it's not a loan. Uh, so we wanna make sure that all students get their FAFSAs in as soon as possible. Um, so again, the link that I provided is the direct link to the Department of Ed website where you can apply for financial aid. If this is your first time applying for financial aid ever in your life, you'll need to create what's called an FSA ID, which is your own unique um, set of identifying credentials, which will link your information to your FAFSA and all your financial aid that you're going to receive from now until you're done with school. If you're a dependent student, meaning you're living at home, you're under the age of 24 and your parent or parents are still supporting you, your at least one parent will need to create their own FSA ID as well. When you're doing your FAFSA, it will ask you a series of questions in the student status section where it will determine whether your parents' information is necessary. So again, if you're coming straight out of high school and you're you know, at this point living at home with your family, then at least one parent will need to apply for financial aid with you. If that does not apply to your situation and you're over 24 or you've been on your own and there are certain things that you can um, submit to us to show that you are um, providing for yourself, then oftentimes we will not require, the Department of Ed will not require parents' information. Um, but I say all that to say that the FAFSA application it can be lengthy, especially if you're doing it for the first time. So our staff, even though we're not on campus and we love to see everybody's face coming through the office and sitting down and working with you individually, we are available 
you know, through Zoom. If it's something where you'd like to set a Zoom chat and we walk you through the application online, we can do that. If it's a phone call, if it's FaceTime, any way that we can connect with you to answer your questions, we're more than willing to do that. Um, for this year's FAFSA for the 2020-2021 application, I know that's a mouthful, uh, but it's 2020-2021, meaning anyone who is starting school in the fall of 2020 and will be enrolled throughout uh, the spring or summer of next year, 2021, that's the application that you want to complete online. For that FAFSA, you will need to provide either you or you and your parents 2018 income and tax information. So once you've done your FSA ID and you're ready to sit down and do your FAFSA um, from the beginning, you'll want to make sure that you have that information handy so that when it comes to the student or the student and parent financial section, you can answer those questions directly. Um, other than that, the other important thing that you want to make sure that you do on your FAFSA is list BFIT. Um, on your FAFSA, you can list up to 10 schools. Um, for some of you, we know that, you know, we are just one of several options that you're looking at. And of course, we're hoping that BFIT is the school that, you know, you choose at the very end. Um, but you want to make sure that you list us with our Department of Ed code, which is 002151. Again, that DOE code is 002151. Um, if you submit your FAFSA and we are not listed, there's no way that BFIT on our own can um, access that information from the Department of Education. They will not release that to us because you as a student applicant need to provide um, that permission. Um, so again, um, you might have done a FAFSA and not listed BFIT. You can certainly go back and add us so long as you haven't added 10 schools already. And typically from the time you add us to your FAFSA, we'll be able to get that information, um, you know, probably in one to two business days. Um, and then once we receive your FAFSA transmission, you know, we review it for everything from federal to state to institutional money. That can, for most students, mean a combination of federal, state, and institutional grants, scholarships, loans, and possibly student employment. Um, some of you, if you are a City of Boston resident and meet certain other criteria, might be eligible for the tuition-free program. So we also will review for that as well. Um, and any other question that you have throughout the aid process, if there's additional documentation that um, either the Department of Ed or our school requires, we certainly will let you know about that in advance and let you know the best steps uh, given our circumstances to get that information to us. Awesome. Sorry, I know that was a lot. <laughs> no, that was perfect. I think it was very, very helpful. Thank you very much. Sure. I appreciate that. All right, and um, just to go back, just to reiterate, so like I said, the homepage, www.bfit.edu has literally all of the information that you need to know, and hopefully I was able to kind of show you exactly where to find that information. For the purposes of the prospective students, um, we want to direct your attention, of course, to the admissions tab and also to the academics tab where you'll see all of the majors, admissions and aid tab where you'll find all the information about applying and also about our contact information so you get to see who we are. Of course, many of us are displayed in this chat, myself included, Shawnee, Min, Calvin, but you'll be able to see the whole team and you'll be able to see um, our contact information. So if you want to contact us directly, feel free to do so as well. Um, I do want to answer some of the questions that are in the chat. Um, I know Alexander has been asking two different questions. Um, so just to talk briefly about the, the class schedule. So typically, we uh, encourage students to have their Monday through Friday schedule free because that's typically when classes will be offered. So for the students who are studying associates and bachelor's level programming, that is the expectation. That's typically when classes will be offered. I'm not saying that you'll be in class every day from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., but that's typically when the classes will be inserted within the particular schedule. So the schedules can vary. Of course, um, you know, you may have a schedule where you might be released at 1.30 or 2 o'clock in, in the afternoon. You might have a schedule that all your classes start at 9. It all just varies and all depends on the, and depends on the major. Uh, for the students who are interested in certificate programs, we have a night option for them. So the students who are doing HVAC, um, practical electricity, and also automotive technology, those classes are offered Monday through Thursday 
uh, between 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. Some classes may end around 9, 9.30, but typically between 4 and 10, Monday to Thursday, that's when the classes will be offered. The only difference is HVAC because HVAC, we actually do have a daytime program and we have a nighttime program. Daytime typically starts anywhere between 7.30 and 8, and they get out around 2 with some breaks in between. And of course, nighttime for between 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. Um, so that's typically what the daily class schedule is like. Um, of course, you have many different opportunities and times for other things, for studying, for preparing for other classes, for lunch, for, for whatever. Um, but that's typically what the expectation that we give to students are. Um, now, to your second question about um, submitting disability accommodation. So typically when a student has disclosed that they have accommodation that they would like to be have met, we encourage them and lead them to talk to the director of disability services. Then she has a one-on-one -on -one with the student. Sometimes the student might go by themselves. Sometimes the student might join with a parent or a guardian or a trusted um, friend or whomever. Um, so typically with that conversation, that's typically where the accommodation will be made. And that way she'd be able to relay that information to the instructor to basically make sure that they are, that everybody's on the same page and, and that those accommodations are met within the classroom. So really I would, um, we typically direct the students to talk to the director of disability services and they have a meeting and then she does all the accommodations from there. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, now, let's see, I know I have a few people on. Is there any other questions? I know, um, we know Michael had to leave. Um, but yes, is there any other questions that I can answer? Is there something that I can show you guys? If maybe I can go over something, um, I would be more than happy to answer that at this moment. You guys can either write it in the chat. I don't know if, are we unmuting them? I don't know if we're unmuting. I think I just unmuted everything. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, Hi, Alexander. So, Alexander, did I answer your two questions? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, is anybody else who is on the line, anybody have any questions that I can answer for you? Sounds good. Okay. No, um, if anybody has any questions, um, there's a financial aid email in the chat as well as you can email us at um, emissions at bfit.edu if you have any emissions um, or financial aid questions and we can um, we can uh, get those answers for you okay so uh, alex alexander is asking about the biomedical engineering technology program uh, and what the schedule will look like for that. So um, biomedical engineering technology is a great, a great way to work in healthcare, but behind the scenes is working with technology. So there's many different equipment that's used within health, with, with healthcare that biomedical engineering technicians work on diagnosing, repairing, and to recalibrate and to, and to fix in many different capacities. So essentially, it's a great way, like I said, to work in healthcare but working behind the scenes, not necessarily being a, a, a doctor or a nurse or a nurse practitioner, but also just being somebody who's working behind the scenes to fix and diagnose and repair the equipment that these different hospital professionals use. So of course, especially um, with, a, with a field like healthcare, there's many different te technology that's, that's embedded within healthcare systems. So that's the best way to explain the biomedical engineering technology program. Oftentimes I tell students about the, the movies that they may have watched and if you see somebody whose heart is, somebody's dying and then they take the, the defibrillators and they put it on their heart to rejuvenate the heart to send electronic shock waves through their body. Um, machines like that are one of the many different examples of what biomedical engineering technology students use. Um, the, the schedule for that is typically like what I described before about having a Monday through Friday schedule between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. The only difference of their schedule is their last year, the last semester of their last year might look a little bit different because they're gonna be spending a lot of time at uh, Mass General Hospital with their internship. So they might, they're gonna be spending a lot of time doing that with their last year, last semester. Other than that, um, schedule typically remains the same, eight to four is when the classes will be offered Monday through Friday. Um, 
Elijah asked about the mechanical engineering technology program. So we have two different programs for those. We have the associate program, we have the, we have the bachelor's program. So essentially, um, there's many different equipment that's used to help bend, break, and um, cut and melt material. And it's also used to assist the mechanical engineers. So essentially what mechanical engineering technologists do is they become machinists and they, work, they learn how to make, to create different pieces that are used within mechanical engineering by looking at different computer systems that are directly aligned with these different mechanical systems. If you looked in that clip that I showed earlier, you'll be able to see a brief, uh, a brief like, like a three second view of, of like what that looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to send you the link to the mechanical engineering technology page. Um, that way you'll be able to see the, you'll be able to see the video that's associated with that program and then hopefully that will be able to further articulate your um what the seeing what the mechanical engineering technology lab looks like and what some of the things that some of the different um projects that they will complete within these different labs so i'm going to send that to you right now um, also um for you guys that want a little bit more um information about your program if you go on the website and click on the uh on your major you can actually look at the courses that you will be taking each semester. Um, so it'll give you a complete breakdown of each semester, the courses that you'll be taking. So you can get a better understanding of the curriculum that's about to be at hand. So, um, you know, there was a question about um, civil engineering, which we don't have. We have electrical engineering, which is more so the umbrella of all engineering, um, all engineering. So if you take a look at the electrical engineering, um, pathway in the courses um, that can give you a better understanding of the program and um, you know some of the outcomes that was the second part of your um, your question Alexander yes and earlier would you guys um, what I showed you guys very briefly is our course catalog um, so you're able to download each of the course catalogs of course you want to download the most recent one being the 2019 2020 school year so you'll be able to accurately see exactly all the different classes that are going to be offered um within the time that you're going to be at the school so yeah uh, thank you calvin for bringing that up so hopefully um i didn't click on it before um but uh but if you look at the academic side and you look at the program, like looking at under the programs, one of the last tabs you will see is the course catalog. So exactly what Calvin just said, you'll be able to see that and like see the breakdown of all of the majors and all the classes that are within those majors. Um, we, do we have to take a placement test? Yes. Um, um, so if you are uh, the only program that does not require placement testing is HVAC. Um, however, all students are required to take a placement test. Um, that way we can see if the student is able to um, start taking the technical classes within their program. So the particulars of the placement test are typically described once the students are actually at the placement test and they talk a little bit about what their major is. It's, it's typically different for, for each major. Um, but yes, Alexander, there are ways to practice. So I'm also going to share some of the links that you can use that will be able to help you prepare for the placement test. Um, of course, it's broken up into the math. It's broken up into math and English. The math is broken up into arithmetic and early algebra, and the English is broken up into reading and writing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you, I'm going to send a link to everybody just about some of the different practice exams that students will be able to take, and then just give you a very brief overview about like what how to prepare for this test even though if, if you we try not to have students feel like in the test but it's more so of an assessment to kind of see where you are that way we're not placing you in a class that is we want to place you in the, in the accurate class once you start taking different classes so let me find those and i'm going to give those to you right and the good thing about the um the placement test is um we're going to be sending out information within the next week or so that's going to um, give you the uh, the walkthrough. We'll be doing the placement test through Zoom. So students will be able to um, take the placement test online uh, at home with the um, with the BFIT Proctor pretty much um, helping you out through the Zoom account. Um, so there'll be more information being sent out uh, that should be sent out within the next week or so. 
So definitely pay tune, stay tuned to your text messages and your emails. Yes. Um, I was asking because I've been out of school for like probably like eight years. So, you know, it's on my mind right now. Like, you know, I still got it or what now. You know, it's a lot to change. Yeah. So, I just wanted to know so I can, at least, like, you know, I got the practice test. That would be good. Mm -hmm. See where I'm at. So, basically, let's just say if you take the test and you don't pass it, is there a step before that? Like, will they make you do some courses and then you get to do your selected? So, yeah, so with, with the placement test, um, it's not a it's not a pass fail you're in or you're out. It's more so just a way for us to um, figure out what classes we need to put you in for the first semester. Um, so you know, some students need development courses so they can so we can prepare them for the next courses that'll be in the curriculum. Some students come in and they're already ready to go into their major. They don't need any. Um, any um, development courses or any courses to prepare them for the um, the major related courses. So it's just really an assessment, like Akeem said, to really just um, decipher where you are in the in the um, w w with English and math, so we can put you in those right classes as well as um, start to put you in some of the um, all college curriculum courses or technical courses if you're um, eligible for that. And there's tutors, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. We have tutors for for <laughs> all for all programs, and they're free. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. Yes. Um, I don't know. I mean, you guys were pretty well, very informative. Appreciate it. I mean, I was just gonna go look on the website and just explore everything. Um, we we encourage you to do that. Um, definitely still go on the website because there's going to be a couple of different things you'll be able to play around with, like the um, career placement and, and like depending upon your major, you can go on your um, on the website and see how many jobs in the past year have been um, uh, offered in, in that specific major or program. So it just gives you a better, better sense of, um, you know, direction and to just verify that the correct major that you're going into is what you really want to do and really want to um, become. Awesome. Awesome. Panama. Well, 